morning. We are here at the Auto Expo Africa 2019 and we've just uh, bumped into this Boston stand and I'm here with Ross. Hi Ross, how are you doing? Uh, very well, thank you. Thank you. Could you just tell us about uh, your stand and exactly what we do? I found this machine quite fascinating because we're electric driver Africa, so we're all interested in, in reducing emissions. Yeah, yeah. that's for sure. Mm. So this is an emission tester for uh, gas and uh, for petrol and for diesel engines. Uh, this unit here measures the level of particulate from uh, a diesel engine and this machine here measures a, a level of various gases from a petrol engine which we'll show you in a moment. Uh, this is uh, a unit that's used in British UK uh, MOC stations uh, as part of the regulatory annual test called the MOC. Hey everybody, it's Joey Gay here. So we found this emissions test very, very interesting. Please let us know in the comments below, do you have such an emissions test in your country out here in Africa? So I'm from Zimbabwe and I'm pretty sure we don't have this test because we have our vehicles inspected by the VID, the Vehicle Inspection Department. And I've never seen such a test. I don't know, maybe it's there now, but I don't think so. Let us know if you've seen one. I'm not sure we also have this test in South Africa, but if we do, please let us know, leave a comment below. Uh, tell a friend, tell a friend, share the video, like, subscribe, and let's discuss it. Also, what do you think about uh, African countries introducing such tests if we don't have such tests? What impact do you think it will have on the price of vehicles? As you know, in Africa, most people tend to import used vehicles from Japan and England and Thailand and places like that. And if you're driving on the right side of the road, that's like in West Africa, most people are importing from the USA and stuff. Uh, what do you think an emissions test and uh, stricter rules to clean air zones like in England would have on the cost of cars and driving? Uh, I know it's obviously it's good for the cleaning the environment, so we clean up the smog and stuff. But let us know what you think about it. Do you think it will make cars more expensive? I know in Kenya there's an age cap, so the maximum age of a car you can import is about 8 years. And I think they even want to bring that down to 5. So that will also help with emissions because uh, newer cars are cleaner. Obviously, we are electric driver Africa. We are advocating for electric cars. Hybrids, if you want, and this is a stepping stone. Uh, Plug-in hybrids, that is. It's a stepping stone to move into clean transportation. Yeah, so check out the rest of the test. And thank you for joining. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Um, so we have various headings here. Uh, we have official tests and we have standard tests. Official tests mean that um, there is preset limits that the car must fall below in order to pass the emissions test. Uh, in standard tests, which I can show you uh, without that, you have the, the choice of gas analyzer or for petrol or smoke meter for diesel. So if I select petrol, the machine will do an auto zero before it starts to suck in draw in the uh, exhaust gases in this case it's just going to draw in whatever's in the this room uh, which will show mainly just oxygen or it should do otherwise we have pollution in this room in this room yeah yeah maybe someone's idling somewhere yeah <laughs> <laughs> so it's still doing an also zero that normally takes about a minute um, so it shows uh, carbon dioxide carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, hydrocarbons, nitrous oxide, oxygen level, and lambda. Lambda is a mathematical equation between the various gases. Uh, it's an algorithm, for want of a better expression. And in the UK, most vehicles have to get below 1.03 lambda in order to pass the test. Okay, 1.3 lambda. So as you can see at the moment, it's measuring uh, oxygen. Uh -huh. And fortunately, because we're indoors, it's not locating or sensing any other gases. Oh, which nice. Is, which is good. Which is good, yeah. <laughs> so uh, tell us about the um, low emission zone in London. Oh. <laughs> That's a big subject. So uh, we've had for a number of years a low emission zone, uh, which uh, is being expanded and it's going to get uh, drawn out towards uh, what they call the North Circular Road in uh, London, which is a circular road that goes all around London in a complete circle. And if your car is of a certain age, which might be Euro, 
2, Euro 3, Euro 4, you will have to pay a fee to come into London. Okay. If it's uh, Euro 5, which is a cleaner uh, level and a newer vehicle, uh, you'll pay a small fee. If you had the very latest vehicles, which is called Euro 6, so they're very clean, very low in pollutants, uh, you can travel into London without paying the low emission zone charge. Okay, so, so you're better off with an electric car? Yeah, you're probably better off with Or a hybrid. Or hybrid. Yeah. Hybrid, definitely. They're exempt. Okay. They're fully exempt. Electric cars, hybrids are fully exempt. Okay. Um, they have introduced the ultra low emission zone, uh, which again is for a smaller, a smaller diameter going around London. Okay. But over time, I'm sure this will be expanded. Expanded. I remember the last year I was in London, I saw the big red buses, BYD. They're having electric buses running now. That's right. Yeah. Do. Okay. Yeah. We don't have those yet here in, in Kenya. <coughs> we have a few in Cape Town. Right. But uh, yeah, but I think we need more of those buses. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So what else do you have on your stand? Uh, right. Well, we, over here we have a brake tester. This is used um, again in government test lanes. Okay. I call them government test lanes because they are uh, assessed and overseen by the government, although the test lanes in the UK are privately owned. Privately owned, okay. So this unit is sunk into the ground so that it's level with the ground. Uh, the car drives its front axle and then its rear axle into the rollers. When the axle is in the rollers, uh, it pushes down on this piece here so that the brake tester knows there is a vehicle in the rollers. Mm -hmm. uh, the rollers start and then when you apply the brakes, the rollers start by, you know, with electric motors. Mm -hmm. uh, you apply brakes to the vehicle and there's force sensors that will sense how efficient, what sort of force reading the brakes are able to generate. And with a known weight of the vehicle, you will then be able to work out the efficiency of the brakes. Okay. Uh, the other item that's used on an official test lane is the headlight tester. Mm -hmm. You want to come round here. Light tester is a, a simple piece of equipment, but uh, very effective. So you can adjust the height. You can adjust it, move it left and right for left and right headlights. Okay. You have a laser up here, mm -hmm. which you would shine down. It gives you a straight line, straight edge laser. Okay. Uh, so that you can make sure that this is in line or aligned directly with the vehicle. Okay. You have another laser here which shows you or indicates whether your lens is in the middle of the headlight. <coughs> the headlight will be about um, that sort of distance away from the lens. Okay. When the headlight is switched on you can see it will give you a reflection of the beam in the screen here. And there's various uh, calibrated lines on that screen. Okay. And the, the main intense part of the headlight, known as the hot spot, must fall on that sort of main centered center line. There is also a kick up from a headlight beam pattern, what they call the kick up, and that kick up mustn't go higher than the uh, little indicator there on the left hand side of the screen. If it's too high, it will dazzle people mm -hmm. coming towards the headlight. Mm -hmm. If it's too low, you won't see enough ahead of the road to be safe at night. So, that is the um, equipment that is used for testing. Uh, we have various other equipment, uh, such as a transmission jack. This is um, a very high quality unit. It's weighted 1.2 tonnes. Okay. Uh, you can put various attachments on the top. It's uh, a double ram. Pump it up. Come on. So, and adjust it down. So, if I want to open a garage converting old classics to electric, I could use this equipment, right? This jack. If you would 
well, this particular jack is really for trucks. It's for trucks, okay. You take a gearbox out of a truck and you mount it there. You mount it on here. Yeah. Because it could be easily a ton. A ton, okay. You're not going to lift it by hand. Yeah. Um, same with for trucks, you might want to use this wheel drive. <coughs> so if you're taking a wheel off a truck, they're very heavy, because mm -hmm. they're big, you can wheel this up to the tyre. These arms go each side of the tyre. Uh, you can slip this over, stop the wheel tyre falling off, you can undo the nuts. Just the point of this, so it lifts the wheel, it lowers it, and you can take the wheel off uh, with a much more ease than trying to pull it off by hand. More importantly, because there are rollers here where the wheel sits, as you can probably see on mm -hmm. both sides, yeah. when you come to put the tyre back on, or the wheel back on, you can rotate the wheel to make it line up with the studs on the axle, ah. as opposed to trying to do it manually, manually. which is very heavy, very, heavy, very yeah. difficult and very time consuming. Yeah. This will save a lot of time. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, we have a very simple things which I'm sure you're all familiar with. Yeah. Uh, five ton rated axle stands, uh, a 20 ton bottle jack. Mm -hmm. Over here we have a two ton trolley jack. It's long with a low profile so that it can reach under low vehicles. This particular one has an adapter on it, which is called a cross beam adapter. So you can lift an axle, and the arms are extending, you can make adjustments on it. Yeah. Um, over here. We have a two post lift, this is rated to uh, lift vehicles which are three tons, up to three tons. It has to be uh, bolted to the ground. It's what is called a mechanical screw lift, so okay. you have a motor at the top on one post. And that will drive uh, a screw, which in turn you have nuts load nuts here okay. and when the screw turns it lifts the carriage. Yeah. The other carriage is lifted because this screw is linked by a chain going mm -hmm. through the base. So it will in turn make both carriages go up uh, and you lift the vehicle up. Yeah. Okay. Thanks Ross. Thanks for your time. Okay. Much appreciated. No problem. Thank you very much.